the age is because my doctor is willing to go there now. What's that? <laughs> my daughter, she said, I'm going there. <laughs> I want to go there. <laughs> she's one of the one of the people that are already going, and she's on your team. Yeah. Hey, quick <laughs> question. Um, when we go to colonies, like Nick, you know, like let's say if I'm in a colony, do you see me as the physical me, or like am I completely different looking in a colony? What colony are you talking about? Our human colonies. Well, they're all human colonies, but there's a Griffith near that's. No, I mean, like, when you see somebody. It depends uh, on the colony you're on. That's why I'm asking. If really? I wasn't relevant, I wouldn't be asking. I know, but I mean, since I don't know. Like, I don't even know what you E1. look in general. Why would I know? Okay, like, <laughs> if, if you saw me in E1, what would I look like versus if you saw me in a different colony, what Ooh, would I look like? Oh, good question. A cat. Well, actually, Nicholas already answered that question with the idea of what you would call the matrix. What you would do is project your highest self of what you wanted to be in that particular density or colony, as you guys call it. Yeah. How you're perceiving the environment that you're presented with and what you want to yes. reflect back. By your choice, they're all going to be different, but it's going to be you at that vibrational state. You know, what you're putting out, and they'll receive that because, of course, you're telepathically connecting to show each other, much like in 3D, what we choose to look like. Okay, so even in those different states, then somebody will be able to recognize me. Oh, yeah, we don't recognize your form. We recognize your vibration. Once again, the more truthful you are, the more we recognize each other. Okay. Think about Just that. Just like a dehedron, basically. Okay. You're yeah, a dehedron yeah. spinning around, and then you give yourself form yeah, that we there can you all go. perceive. Nice, very good. So then, uh, you know, when I dreamt of like those four jaguars or panthers, they must be like you know some of you guys who projected yourself in that form, and I, you know, then we were friends. It's yes, quite possible, but yeah, because yeah. um, a lot will identify with um jaguar at the moment, and. Yeah, I can see that happening. I had a similar situation, like, you know, the another dream that I had was, like, you know, I saw some dogs, and I was talking to Nick about it. One was, like, a dark brown dog, and when he hugged me, he was actually moving his paws on my back, like, you know, you were embracing somebody and, like, you know, caressing somebody's back. And I was feeling at the time that, oh, my God, this dog is actually caressing my back. So at the time, I must have projected myself as that dog, or, and I saw some of you guys as other dogs. Could that be it? Yeah. That was the way you were able to perceive them as a recognition, so that's the way you gave it to yourself in 3D so you can recognize them in that fashion. Does that make sense? Yeah, but, you know, at the time, like, those dogs, I didn't know who was who. Uh, the funny thing, though, is, like, you know, now looking back, I saw four dogs and I saw four jaguars. Bye, Dan. <laughs> Night, Dan. Love you. Right, Bye, I'm Dan. Gonna, I'm getting tired, too. Okay. I'm getting off the hangout because I'm just... I'll have another one tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye, Nick. Bye. Good night, Nicholas. Night. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Good night. Uh, I, I, was, I was just going to say that we should make a meditation. I will say goodbye <laughs> by saying, fear my roar. <laughs> be, very, be very, be very, sticking in the nose. Be very afraid. <laughs> oh, I'm so scared. But wait, so wait, wait. <laughs> Because I will show you the power of my roar. Be very afraid. Yes, what? Think about this. I like your. I really like your.
Nice. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jack Wire. All I see you now is a carpet in front of my fireplace <laughs> that I'm laying my naked boy back on. <laughs> Very nice. Good one. Good, good. <laughs> yet, yet still you fear me because my roar is very powerful. <laughs> meow, meow. Oh my God. It instills fear in the hearts of my enemies. They tremble. Meow. I think I just get myself. <laughs> you shit yourself. <laughs> I just pick you up and, and just cuddle with you because I love cats. I wouldn't be able to. Just so you know, my dog is laughing at your, your roar. Caitlin. 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 Go go to the zoo. Go work with some big cats, and then after a year of cleaning up their shit, tell me how much you love cats. Uh, God. <laughs> hey, I've been. Hey, I my cat lives with me in my room. Do you know how terrible that is? They clean that case litter every day. Multiplied ten times with a big one. <laughs> he used to live in my in my room because he hates my dogs. If he goes outside my room, he tries to attack my dogs. Absolutely hates them. So it's it's a sad thing. Very sad. Oh, can't you make him like a little little <laughs> runway so we can go outside? <laughs> Um, well, my house is extremely small, so but we're moving, so it's gonna be okay. My rooms are gonna be so much bigger, and he. Oh, won't oh he won't like that. Won't like, that. So don't like moving. Cats don't like moving. I don't think he will either, because the energy. Caitlin, is do you know what cats love? Kitty tree. No, karaoke. Let's all sing. I'm nervous, but I'm excited at the same time. So I'm just gonna start talking. Yay! Like, 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 I just want to hug all them. Mute your microphones. Every cat. Me and my mom have a karaoke. Went away. Now I got to run. Yay! Oh. I am my cat, looking at the tube, and sorry, I'm thinking about cat. Oh, it went away. <laughs> Not fair. Say, I am a cat, look. Oh, <laughs> I give up. That was a good idea. Wait, For what now. Hey. For hey, something what completely want? different. Okay. Stay away from Caper. She's cute. She's too cute for you. No. Oh, I love Shih Tzus. They're so cute, but they bark so much. Bark? They bark too much. And they bite too much. I know, man. Oh, Lordy Lord. Anyway, I'm going to go. Somebody's calling me. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I can hear it in the background. Hey, Liz! Hey, Liz! <laughs> no, it's on Skype. I should probably answer this before Mommy. I get killed. Okay, go away. Go away, Logan. Mommy. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. 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 Mommy! <laughs> Wait, but who's Mommy? Uh, and suddenly a lot of children came in the chat, like from different directions. You're going where, Jaguar? Away. To prepare for the, for the games and also for 3D life tomorrow. Early morning, so yeah. Ouch. The body needs some rest. Thanks for popping Bye. by. Thank Europe you need to inviting me. Yeah. Good night. The games await. Good night. Goodbye, everybody. Have fun. Meow. Make that roar. Yeah. Yes. Be very fearful. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
my powerful <laughs> war. <laughs> I'm I'm a twelve foot tall big cat. Meow. Oh Jaguar, I always imagine twelve feet and I'm standing and I say, My goodness, I'm gonna be up to his neck. <laughs> Miss, I mean <laughs> so big now. How much is twelve feet? Jaguar. Well, how much is twelve I want to hug a hockey team. How much is 12 foot? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> How much is 12 feet, Mom? <laughs> is that your son in the background? Oh, daughter? My daughter, she's so excited. She's like a hockey teeny 12 feet. Oh, my goodness. She got the measurement. She wants to measure how much is 12 feet. How old is she? Eleven. Yeah, I would say. I would say. <laughs> I'm going to sixth grade. Nice. You're a big girl. Big girl, yeah. Nice, nice, very nice. Is mommy is mommy good? Is she listening to you? <laughs> yeah. She looks oh. like a very good mommy. Yeah. That's what we want to hear. From the heart. Thank From you. the heart. Yes, <laughs> handsome. <laughs> okay, people, people are running from my meditation, okay. but I will catch you guys. I love you. We'll do very massive meditation, all of us. It will be very, yeah. very powerful. Yeah, I can also do some guided meditations as well if uh, people are interested in. Yeah, I have a very, I have a, I have a very, very efficient and a short one because I don't like the long ones. It's the long ones are when people are together physically, but when well, they're together mentally, it's better to shorten things. It's different for everybody, Ellie, in a way, but I understand that, and you do as well. But the most important I find is actually oxygenating your cells, is making sure you've got enough oxygen in your cells when you meditate, and making everything alive in your body. You, someone like you, Ellie, who is an amazing um, sports lady, you find this very easy. Yeah, I access it easy, but it's still. It's important. It's important how you breathe. I'll take you through a death meditation one night if people are up for it. <laughs> ah, come on. Yeah? That's a really powerful one. That is one of the most powerful meditations I've ever done in my life. I had to run out of the room crying. To learn more about myself, but it was very powerful. Okay. <laughs> Death is nothing to be scared of, it's just a transition. Yep. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to discuss death right now. Guys, I'm Why? leaving you. What? I love you okay. all. Okay. Oh, we do too. I'm hungry. <laughs> Go food. Go get your meat. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I love you all. Bye. Bye, Zekia. See you soon. Ciao. Ciao, bambino. We'll see soy. you soon. Some sunny day. It's so interesting. Always when I go and wait for for buying something and people are waiting as well, I always get to be the last one and no one comes after me. This happens so often. Like... Sometimes. Sometimes. I've done it a couple of times as well, but I just fall asleep listening to you guys because you're in different time zones. And, so. We are making 
up and I'm like, oh, I'm the only one in the room. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, a European, a European time zone hangout soon. Yeah, the funny thing is, though, I'm actually on Eastern, Eastern time usually. So I wake up at 11, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, and I won't sleep till three or four in the morning. Yeah, you don't have a baby. I don't have babies. No. I don't know if I have hybrid children. That might be quite interesting. I've never asked that question. Well, I asked once, and I didn't at the moment. So Lakesh was, "Who do you like one?" And I was like, "Okay." And he was like, well, "What kind would you like?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like that, is it? We get options. Yeah, show me the list, and I'll, I'll show me the list, and I'll pick which ones I want and which ones I don't. <laughs> so, <laughs> I would pick next time. How old is my hybrid child? Which is not have mine. Have you um, have you sort of donated any of your DNA towards the project? Oh yeah, like long time ago. Oh, then you have got hybrid children then. Yeah, like my, my, how do you call it, where your eggs are. Ovaries. Yeah, they were hurting like two weeks after that. Hey, that's quite strange because um, someone else was saying about that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you can sense when they take from you. Yeah, but as a natural woman, you can also sense when they're going to, when your period's starting and when yeah, they start. Yeah, 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 it had yeah. nothing to do with it. Okay, okay. It was a completely different emotion. You've got to remember I'm a man, so. <laughs> I only know one side of the story, yeah. Well, in this timeline, you only know one side of the story. <laughs> Precisely, yeah. But I'm very, very well um, attuned towards feminine side. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, Rowie. Rowie. He has this uh, empathy. Excellent. Yeah. But the funny thing is, like, I, I, love, I love being with women sexually, but um, I'd much rather be around men for a laugh. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> a lot more. My, I've got a lot more like male friends, but um, I seem to fall out with women a lot. Don't know why. I don't know why as well. Yeah, my bro brother. Um, all his friends are girls, and yeah, he finds it really hard to get on with men. Right. Okay, so Jamal, just stop texting to me when I mentioned about Hector. <laughs> yeah, don't talk to him about Hector. I already said this. Really? Well, I mentioned it like before you said it. Just, just, just say, just, just. Um, oh, it's okay. Everything's don't get me in trouble. Don't get me banned, please. <laughs> Why? What? Why? You asked me not to. But I know. No, it's okay. I know. I didn't mention the name. But I know that he's channeling. Like, I, you, you can say that. You can say that from his voice. That is yeah. the same guy. Yeah. It's obvious. Like, it's like seeing a circle on a circle. Yes. So. Okay. He is one of Malchovic's best students. He's literally been doing some quite. He had he had a choice of paths he could go down, and he's gone down a really positive one, and disgusted. It really really resonated with me when I heard it all, and that's why I chose that as well. 
Yeah, I've I've been thinking of trading for like honestly four years now. Maybe a little bit more. And I really wanted someone to catch me and I asked people and they just started introducing me to the Forex. And I, I have downloaded the, the app on my Mac and tried to learn something, but when I, I did this alone, it looked like Chinese language. <laughs> well, yeah. I was always interested in, in botting and scripting and finding ways. But what we're doing now is actually we're combating the bots. So we are we're yeah. using our intention and our thing to beat the the AI. So it's, it's a very nice story. It's, it's intuition combined with knowledge. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was very happy yesterday. Yeah. Really good experience. Oh, and I stayed up till um, four o'clock in the morning. Jason did a uh, um, this very short presentation because he couldn't get his microphone working. But basically, telling you how to trade over the weekend. Yeah. Oh. With a ninety percent win rate. Okay. You tell me later. You yeah, it's been posted. It's been posted on the Facebook. But he doesn't want anyone knowing too much about it. He wants to sell it, but he's going to give it, sell it to us members at a reduced rate. So. Okay, of course he will sell it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's still a few greedy ones in in, in the four kings, but um, Jamal yeah. is the Jamal is the really he's the one he's the visionary. He I, has something. He has something. Yeah. Yeah, he's a very special guy, mm -hmm. and considering he's only 19 years old as well, I mean, it's just like, wow. No. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm not speaking with him anymore. It's very young. <laughs> I thought he's like 30. Yeah, he comes across at that age. Yeah. He's just confident in himself, and he's like he's been a student of Malsevich, so okay. he knows what he's on about. Good, good, good. Jason as well. Yeah, that's what I was learning last night. Yeah. Green, green mindset, I know. But it's very complicated. It it's like your screen's just like, oh my god. <laughs> What's going on here? Nothing is using all these different, different strategies and yeah, the, that that was what I was telling about, like changing the strategy every second. That was what I was imagine, imagining they do all the time. Yeah, like switching, like switching. Yeah, it's all very exciting. Mm. It's it's more exciting than it was a couple of weeks ago, put it that way. So I'm really happy about that because I was getting a bit worried, like oh, I just don't want to be staring at a two D screen and watching candles go up and down. But now the money's coming in. That's yeah. um different kettle of fish. And from what I see, you can get people in without them paying their fees. <laughs> well, I had to do with meeting burner. You had to be your email had to be registered. Now I never gave them your email, and I tried a different email I used, and I couldn't get into the meeting room. Okay. So I don't know how the hell you got in. Well, I got into meeting burner the day I paid my fee, but ah, I haven't tried right. to go to meeting burner before. But oh, oh, you oh, haven't oh, okay. sent me a link until that day. No, no, no. The link was always on the yeah, yeah, yeah. on the. Yeah, um, but still, you were 
Yeah. Oh, you were away. You were away on your wedding, and yeah. Well. Yeah, I was. I was like, I want Ellie back. I want Ellie back. So I paid my way through like a church person, as we say in Bulgarian. You pay your way. You pay everything like a um, pastor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was such yeah. a funny thing. Hey, well. Yeah, well, like, anyway, what you put in is what you get back. So we put into Jamal. Um, so we put into the best best timeline here. Hey, Will. What's up? Uh, not too much. How are you doing? Oh, some of us have to sleep. Others have just awakened. Hey, how's it going? Wonderful. Hey, how's it going? Wonderful. Uh, where, where are you? Are you in Europe or in USA? Uh, I'm in the States, in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, yep. WKRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> Love the name of that city. It's beautiful. Cincinnati. It's like Sin City. <laughs> it is a little right now. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Everywhere, most cities, of you That's very true. Okay, guys, I will leave you for a bit. Okay, I will, I will say something. You know what? Back. You know what beat means in French? Um, it was something funny. Tell me. Beat. It's a dick. Oh right, yeah. So you're, gonna, you're gonna leave us for a dick. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't, don't be so telepathic on me, okay? Uh, just... Can't wait. I always lower the tone. Lower the tone by raising the vibration. See ya, baby. Awesome. And then there were four. <laughs> And then there were four. And one's very excited. <laughs> yeah, what's up with uh, Frankie there? But I, I think he might be asleep. I think he's two hours. I think he's in. Ah. Oh, he's still there. Yeah? <laughs> he's got that smile on his face, sitting back in his chair. <laughs> see him, he's like, hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> oh, I've only just got a picture. Yeah. Funny. I just see the uh, cheetah. Hmm. Yeah, I just see your cheetah. Yeah. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Can you repeat? I kind of lost you a little. Ah, from Thunder Cats. Thunder. Thunder. So what's new no, today, I need guys? A film to watch. So, so what's new today? What's that, Will? Everything. <laughs> you. Oh, <did> me. me. <laughs> <laughs> You're new. We're all new. We just gotta love these old questions that we used to say like to each other and how we now react to them. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, how we yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <clears throat> nice. Just good interaction today. We bounced all around. I can get. I had to leave for a little bit, and that's uh, Nick. Were you, you, were you there the whole time, uh, Rally with the? With yeah, the, I was there most of the time. Yeah. So yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. You know, I saw nice. a little bit of it. I had to get out and come back. So work, working on dream remembrance. Yeah, I caught a little bit of the gym session this morning. I was just rewatching it earlier. 
Mm. Yeah, so it's they're saying we um we can't we can't seem to remember these dreams. We gotta rephrase our definitions a little bit and beliefs and start saying, Oh yeah, I do start to remember the dream. I will Maybe exactly when I need them to be right. there. No second later, no second sooner. Yeah, those affirmations have really been working for me. Like, I'll, before I go to bed, I Good. say out loud, awesome. I wish to have an astral projection that I consciously remember. And then at like 3 in the morning, I'll get that you know whole buzzing in the forehead and then coming out of my body and all that. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah the shit always happens. Yeah, at three o'clock every for time. me too. Yeah, every three o'clock oh. is apparently for a lot. Biologically, in your body, it's when your pineal gland is the most active. Right. 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 Yeah, I got three to four oh. to five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. For me, but for me. My body's adjusted, and it actually seems to be around um, eight, nine, ten o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Because of yeah, my cause lifestyle. Yeah, because you're sleeping. Because you're sleeping uh, style, right? And stuff where you, yeah. 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 And it's really frustrating because it really. I love dreaming. <laughs> But I don't want to. Yeah. Right. Right. Of course, there's a lot of tension. Yeah, I had a dream this morning. I was in some kind of room, and I think I don't know if they were kids or the beings are just shorter, but I think they're just kind of floating around me, and it was it was fun from what I remember. <laughs> just, I wish I had more detail, but. I'll meditate on that. Oh, I love your stories. I mean, I love the way you, you're constantly aware of your astral traveling. And, yeah, I'm, I'm and, um, definitely uh, getting better at the recall. Sorry, what was what did you say? The, uh, are the you aware of the log? Is it log log Sam Rampa? Um, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, uh, Tibetan monks, they have a oh, certain oh, yeah, yeah. that okay, can yeah. actually project. I've got a book somewhere, let me hunt it out. Yeah, I've been reading this uh, book called Astral Dynamics. It's very uh, in-depth about it. You go down to Kings Island any when you're out there? Um, Living yeah, actually, the past two years I've gone for their like Halloween, their Halloween haunt thing, which is you know, it's all crazy and stuff because of the mist, but it's really fun. You like the beast, the roller coaster, the beast? Oh yeah. That's, that's oh yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know how old you are. I'm, I'm 47. Uh -huh. I think I started riding that. My first ride on that was probably, oh yeah, 1977, 76, or something. It's been there forever, but it is one of the baddest road coasters ever. Yeah. <laughs> Even with all the new fangled ones that are coming out, that one will just rattle you right. To the bone. I love that bone. Yeah, those wooden ones are always the oh, yeah. It's like a survival thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, they look really scary. Oh, uh, we have the we have the, all the big steel ones over here, but I've never I've seen the ones you've had over in America, and they look really. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. <laughs> if you do, is like if you want to, they have a video on YouTube. Just type in the Beast at Kings Island, but just the Beast roller coaster, yeah. and You know, they have two chain hills 
I forget how long it was, Will. It's like about a four-minute ride. Yeah, it's, it's no really long. Five-second ride. It is a long time, you know? Wow. So videotape that. Hop in the front seat and see what it's like because it's worth the ride. <laughs> So did, did you ever did you live in Ohio for a while or? Yeah, I lived in Cleveland for a while, and uh, outside of Cleveland, called Bath, Ohio. That's where LeBron had one of his houses. Oh. Uh -huh. But that was years okay. ago. And uh, yeah, my my family was from Worcester, and we have some family up in Chippewa. And my uncle, uh, Chris, lives right there. You know, Kentucky to the Cincinnati border. They're right there. So yeah. they just say they're in Cincinnati. <laughs> yeah, so I got family out that way. Sure. Nice. Yeah, I like it. I liked it up there, but I like the weather here now. I'm done with the snow. I lived eight years in Germany and uh, Virginia and Ohio. And yeah, I like the heat. Yeah, I lived. Um... <laughs> you in Vegas? What was that? Oh, I just asked if you were in Vegas. Yeah, I lived in Vegas. No, no, I was. Uh, now, now I'm in San Antonio. I moved here. Will coughed when you said exactly where you were. Sedona, did you say? No, no, it was in Vegas uh, for 11 years, from 99 to 2012. And then I moved here in 2012 to San Antonio. I'm ah, in San Antonio, Texas ah, yeah. Right now. Yeah, yeah, I know where you're in. Mm -hmm. And studying up on my American geography a little bit more. There you go. Home of the San Antonio Spurs in the finals once again. Repeat of last year with Miami. Well, the funny, the funny thing was I supported San Antonio Spurs because I also supported Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs> in the Awesome. Nice little connection. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't mind actually having a talk to um some uh maybe even nine would be the best person to talk to, but some a bit higher up about computer games and their influence on people and how it's all how it all works. Is it actually a good thing to have virtual war on computer games or is it a bad thing, you know? Is it better to play it out in a virtual reality than a real reality? But mind you, isn't it? It's just something like that, you know, a lot of people can take anger out on, you know, playing in games, but then of course some of them took it into real life, not really, it was just like a release or a distraction to, in some cases, point their anger because it feels like they blow the shit out of someone in, you know, a virtual game. But it was also in that to give us the clue that you are the first in the game, much like the Matrix says, you are Neo in the Matrix. So you are your higher self in this matrix playing the game. That's yeah. another aspect. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Of how we're actually creating. And in your mind, when you're playing the video game, you are actually thinking in that video game of what to do next, what's to come, your reaction time. It, it, there, there's more to it in the higher structures, but I can't even comprehend it right now. But I know there's so much there. I can just, I can taste it. I can sense it. So it all has a greater idea. I'll give you one perspective. Um, one, of my, oh, one of my old gurus sort of thing was um, Ralph. And um, mm -hmm. because he's always acting in love and trying To, trying to push that as much as possible. When he went and played a computer game, to balance himself, he would always play the darkest character he could on that game to try and balance to try and balance himself, you know? So he wasn't always a bit like us grounding in 3D right. and being off in 5 or 4. 
Yeah, that's a good perspective of grounding because sometimes when we're too high up, so to speak, some people feel the need that they need to connect with what's in going on so they play a balancing side. Perfect. I love that perspective. Yeah, I always thought that was quite interesting yeah. as well. Yeah. What video games? Um, not not too much anymore. I did when I was like a teenager and stuff. Yeah. But I played a lot. Played my Doom games and Wolfenstein and. Oh, Wolfenstein. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> Quake. I played Quake too, and you know things like that. And then it just it kind of disappeared. You know, it's like okay. Yeah. Well, I tell you what. If they, I, I'm a big computer game fan. I play a lot, play a lot of games with a lot of friends online and stuff. But they're all becoming so similar. There is, it's just so boring now. There's no originality. There's no playability. Everything. Going, oh, we've got this new game. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. too real. More virtual, play. less playable. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because look, look at Tetris, one of the most playable games mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not exactly the most virtu virtually real. <laughs> right, right. When you, you see you blocks a... falling from the sky. <laughs> Are you a Second Life fan, Rowie? Really? Have you ever gotten into that or anything? I, I, I did, I did try it. Um, I actually was trying to inspire my girlfriend. Friend's daughter to get into it. She's an artist, amazing, amazing graphical artist. Oh, okay. Um, in all sorts of ways, she's learning at the moment at college. But no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't find it uh, exciting. Put it that way. Yeah. So I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't drawn. Yeah, I played a little. A little bit, but I don't know. I didn't have like the focus to put energy into something like that. Well, my ex partner is 46. She, she's too. But role play with other people. <laughs> <laughs> They might go off and do a mission or whatever now and again, but they just make up these. It sort of sort of ends up uh, splitting up because you're spending more time with the role playing games than me. Aww. And the opposite with me, I was playing my games with my friends, you know. So it was I was playing Eve online and right. I was doing my thing, she was doing her thing, and we tried to play games together, but then we clashed a little bit when we played online because I always raced ahead too fast. And, didn't like that very much. <laughs> you know, from the woman's perspective, you know, the double standard thing. Of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thought you might know. Oh, that was a good one. <clears throat> How did your radio show go last night? Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to listen. What's that? How did your radio show go last night? Oh, it was awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It was really, really, really good stuff. Oh, man, you know. Have you ever... You know where the website's at? I haven't looked at the thing yet um, on how many tuned in. But Osiphius and Fire came in, and then we had Rob Gauthier, who channels a benevolent reptilian named Trev, trevchanneling.com. And uh, he was actually mentioned today when we were talking about one of the persons in the group had known who he was. That was a nice little connection. And so we both channeled for a while, giving our perspectives of something, and then we took callers and just really, really, really just 
it was great shit. You know, I always go back and listen to it. It's like, wow, that was awesome. Yeah, I've got the link. I have to go back <laughs> wow. and check it out. Yeah. Give Ascension in, uh, I think, archived episodes, and it'll be my blue triangle, and just click on it and let the page load because there's commercials that have to load real quick, and then it'll start to play and just listen as you just get in your leisure. Excellent. Yeah, do that. Good stuff. yeah, I've got to change my um, I've got to change my listening habits a little bit because I'm still stuck in rents. So rents used to talk a lot of good stuff, a lot about UFOs. He's been doing a bit more recently, but some of it's a little bit too negative and too um, what's the word? Blame based. Based. So everything is due that I'm not very blaming other people. Yeah, I had to go through a phase where, yeah, you know, you kind of cycle through messages that are a little more negative and find what resonates with you more. Yeah, that's right. I always interested. Yeah, and the go ahead, Rox. No, go please, ahead, go ahead. after you. Uh, what I was going to say is, you know, the one thing I keep keep grabbing onto that's just beautiful for me is, like, when I get a truth, I love it. And that's what we talked about on the show today, that Asipius was putting together. It's like he resonated. And then... Sometimes we make it a what you would call a, a rock to lean on. In other words, we're holding on to a particular rung of the ladder of ascension, and there's another truth, but we're afraid to let go of the truth that we were feeling before because it felt so positive. But then the other truth that appears to us is even more vibrationally high, but we say, oh, I'm not sure I want to let go of this. But now you can see what well, that UFO thing got you to where you are now, and now you're done, you know, and now you're going to find a new one to hold on to and expand from that. So that's why oh, so I love that because it's not going to. We are keeping yeah, that's a great idea. that perspective. Make sense? Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Really, really perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and today's show was really about that. It's how we have a tendency to take a truth and transcend it into a series of moments. And in this, and during those series of moments, we hold on to that truth and, quote, drag it through the other moments we're in. We don't really see the other opportunities of expansion that are available to us because we're still reveling in the previous truth. So we took one template of a truth. And then we carried it. Now we can have that perspective and like, wait right. a minute, I'm good with this. Let's see what's next idea. Yeah. And that whole theme of the show, it's really, really good about that. And all the callers were talking about the same thing and the channelings were talking. So it was a really good understanding of the PowerPoint of yeah, really, amazing. really trusting and living in the now. Yeah, it sounds good. like it. Good I remember before I kind of... <laughs> you know, started exploring more of this channeling thing about, I don't know, like a year ago. I got caught up in the whole, you know, Planet X is going to, like, come by Earth. and You're not the only one. It's like, maybe you should expand yourself further from this to, like, reevaluate what you did think was like an expansion. So. Oh, I had one of my friends um, in Canada. Um, right. He was already to move. He was going to be um, literally, yeah, making changes, drastic changes in his life. He was talking to his family about it. And, um, I mean, he's an old guy. He's in his 40s as well. And uh -huh. So he... Uh, yeah, he, he looked a little bit of a fool when it didn't happen, but it just reaffirmed what he needed. To 
we have a lot of doomsday. There is, I think, there was even a TV show about the doomsday preparers, yeah. and they've, you know, they got underground places, and they got all these food that'll last. They got air supply, and they've spent an enormous amount of money to protect them and their families when doomsday comes. And they took a truth that got us to a certain point, but didn't let go of that, and now they're living out that reality as doomsday is going to happen. You know, maybe on... They're for sale. Yeah, maybe. They're for sale in Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> All these underground bunkers that people have built. Yeah, same, same idea. <laughs> and, you know, maybe that'll happen That's on really a... I'll let them play out there, yeah. deal. I always say. Have fun over there. I'll be over here. Yeah, I'll be above <laughs> ground for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally with you. Yeah. Good stuff. If you choose it. That's right. It is choice. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how this whole Planet X thing got going, because we obviously know there are other planets out there in our ought. Or about and uh, and there's a lot of uh, stuff that NASA are straight out, yeah, as I like to call them. I kind of built up right. the idea, like what you're saying, like I'm, there's planets in the Oort cloud, and what I kind of built up in my head after reading various perspectives is, is that you know there was going to be this planet that came in at, and from the, some kind of strange orbit pattern and uh, just kind of, you know, NASA somehow had the ability to never tell us anything, but after a while I just like, you know, I don't, I don't believe this anymore. I just don't believe it at all. Right. Was also the Well, we're spinning around the sun, so we're bound to see it at some point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Within a year, <laughs> at least. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, how is this planet like oh, constantly? Oh, it's rotating, the same as the heat, same <laughs> as the Earth, is it? <laughs> but that goes back to what um, the Roxy channel the other day. I can't remember exactly who it was who did talk about the the other Earth on the other side of the sun. Right, and that's exactly what I was thinking. The opposite Earth, and you can't see that one because it's always in the perfect parallel with us. But uh, Nibira, or Planet X, was kind of... coming in. It actually sweeps through all of the orbital paths of the nine planets that we, let's say, are, let's say, how do you say it? Uh, validating the nine planets in our orbital system and it comes real close to us it's not going to hit us or anything and that was the idea which started this whole triggering event of you know colliding and then maybe that's what happened to Maldek and it you know Maldek collided yeah. with it and it caused the asteroid belt which caused an effect of an asteroid that hit Mars and caused Mars deep uh, magnetic change and then Martians came here and created Earthlings And that leads into the beings that came to Martians. Some of them were humans that became humans, and some of them stayed in what they call a second density form, which we know as Bigfoots. You know that kind of thing. And, oh, yeah. You yeah. Know, have the conscious, yeah. but they know what they are. They didn't forget, but they only choose to stay in the 2D. But they're full awareness, so they stay within their abilities of acting in 3D as a 2D being, however, they still have teleportation ideas and they can walk through things. That's why no one has ever seen them because they can actually just vibrate out of our reality. So all of that yeah, expanded... Get the fuck out. Yeah. yeah. All of that expanded an immense amount of, you know, probability people expanding on other ideas. of the matrix, you know, we know as this universe. 
Newton, and so yeah, it's all quantum, quantum physics. Yeah, yeah. so I, I, yeah. I'm excited Great. about it because it, it brought it brought an understanding to all of us, and then the ones who choose to stay there, let them. And I'm I'm done. So yeah. here I go with my next. You know, see where it takes me. An <laughs> unknown is just fucking. It heavy. really is. <laughs> Yeah. I'm learning that more. Yeah. Yeah, I'm learning that more. Yeah, you're doing you're doing and excellent. So lots and lots of uh, nerves and oh what's gonna happen here and it's all very different and Different country, but it turned out okay. Moving in with a family, yeah. But it was a good experience, yeah. Look where you are now. Look back then and go, wow, that was fun. Yeah, yeah, and what I've been through in that in that eight years as well is just wow, 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 wow. Good stuff. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Right, ladies and gentlemen, it's quarter to three. I'm going to have to go. All right, then. As much as I left to stay up until. Uh, we, we will see you probably in about eight to ten hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it usually happens that way. Oh, yeah, Jackie was language gym tomorrow. Oh, what time is that? Uh, it's on the website. Okay. Uh, I yeah. think it's 11 EST, okay. um, EDT, whatever. Um, so that'll be 10 o'clock my time. I wouldn't know, but yeah, you have to check yeah. it out. Okay. Yeah, I'll find it. I just wish everyone <laughs> works on UTC. Like we do in EVE, because... Oh, maybe we can start doing it. Yeah, that. yeah. I, th I think I might suggest that to Max, and so we we go on to UTC time. Yeah. Because then at least everybody's on the same yeah. on the same page. You can't go wrong. Right. Bloody time. Good deal, man. Okay, guys. No night. Sleep well, tight. All right. Go and wake up. Really. What's the right. I love you. Frankie, are you still there? Hi, baby. <laughs> Fonda. He's not. What, what do you mean? <laughs> it's just like. Background, I'm just watching. <laughs> the tall grass, just watching all of his prey. <laughs> and he's going to pounce when he's ready. <laughs> A hungry smile. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> no, yeah, you're a good kitty. Oh. So what do you do for a 3D day? What do you do? Um, well, I work as a, a line cook and a barista at a Belgian restaurant. Oh, yummy. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's a good... Good job, pays the rent, but it's very, uh, you know, it's a very drone environment. And oh people, yeah, you know, yelling yeah. at each other and getting the food out. You know, that's the objective. <laughs> so it's can uh, can really bring down my vibration at times. Oh, you'll be fine. Yeah, but yep, I do that, and uh, I write screenplays on the side. Awesome. That's what I'm talking about. There's some expansion of your love. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm actually, within the next four months, I'm really looking to make the jump and either move to like California or somewhere out west to um, be in a community of more. So. Yeah. There you go. It can only be awesome. It can only be epic, is what we say. 
Yeah. You know? Definitely. Yeah. And I know it's like <clears throat> I get to a, a point of like, okay, this is fun. I'm done with it, though. And then I start sensing all the changes and things that are just magically starting to happen. And when you see that because you're putting it out there and that's your highest excitement, then you can actually start to sense the change coming. And then yeah. just be there when, you know, I always tell people, be, you will make all of your appointments with your higher self idea of giving you the right of And that's yeah, exactly. You know, that's, I'm just, you know, I've tried to plan things, and oh yeah, it just doesn't work out. And I've noticed, like, you know, everything has happened, or at least in the past year or two, that I've really paid attention to. And everything happens right when it needs to. And I'm just really yep. kind of learning to trust that more. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Keep trusting. Yeah. Okay. I didn't. You know, I wanted a channel. No one taught me to channel. It just started coming. I wanted to start an Ascension business. Someone said, you need to start like a, a business. And then people would start, hey, you know, uh, Wink's husband, the, the me, uh, meditative meditator facilitator of this group meetup that I before I woke up, her husband was a graphic artist, and he goes, you know, Roxy, you really go, and you really move, and I'm going to make you a symbol, like an image, and I said, great, so he goes, what do you see in your mind, and I said, I see a triangle, blue, like a, you're looking down on it, cut the top off, and a nice swirl coming out, oh, and he awesome. put it together, and there's my logo, and then I was, I didn't know what to call my business, and I'm talking to a friend on the phone, she's going, you know what, Roxy, I love it. You know, you want to be an Ascension guy, and I see it like an odyssey of Ascension because I had a business called Hair Odyssey, and I just thought of it as an voyage, an epic voyage of your Ascension. And then, you know, someone says, you need to start channeling your stuff in, in person. And then I met Rita, and Rita met through Wink, and she goes, I'll tape you. And... You know, okay, then then what else? Let's see what else. Oh, the radio show. I didn't even ask for the radio show. I didn't even think about it. A friend of mine sent my one of my videos to Rob Gauthier, who owns the radio station or runs the online uh -huh. uh, blog talk radio enlightenment evolution network. And he goes, Hey, I would love you to be a guest on my show. I was a guest one time. Hey, do you want your own show? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And and then I have to actually run the keyboard and then the first show I was like, Man, I don't like this too much running this. Hey, man, I, you know, I loved your show, blah, blah, blah. And we start talking. He goes, I could be your co-host and run the board for you. And I said, perfect, you know. So it keeps showing me. And if I don't want to freaking do it, I don't right. have to. It'll be there, you know. And then the girl from... Google Plus, someone a while ago says, Roxy, you need to transcribe your videos and start putting them in the paper because it's a freaking book. There's so much stuff in there. And I was like, okay. And then a girl here on Google in the human colonies, I think it was oh, yeah, Laura. Yeah, she's, I think it's Laura. Uh, yeah, she told me about that actually because that, I actually offered to transcribe. Yes. Yeah, fuck yes. Thank you so much. That is so beautiful. Because I didn't want to do it. And like I have a mm -hmm. Odyssey of Ascension uh, blog talk, or uh, not blog talk, Odyssey of Ascension WordPress. And I have, you know, I think 14 or 15 posts on perspectives that I get uh, laid into me. And I got this one I'm writing, and it's so big and it's so <laughs> deep. And it's like, oh. I don't want to write all this. And then Philip said, hey, you know what? I'm going to send you a video camera in case you want to get some stuff and you don't want to type it because I know you don't like to type. So he sent me a video camera yesterday so I can just video cam right here and then load it up and then send it. 
So I, I learned that, and the same thing you're doing now, you can sense there's a change, you put it out there, I want to be in this community, I want to be in that environment exactly. so I can let my mm -hmm. self flourish, you know, and boom, let it go and trust, <laughs> it's like, hey, well, come over here, yeah. okay, you know, and then it just takes yeah, off just, from there, you know, I can't it is wait so to, beautiful. You know, I can really be in that community even though right now like I, I feel great I just I know there's going to be something greater out there oh yeah yes. and that's the thing you know you know to be unlimited you know and there's only the ascension of that and that's what you're following. That's just so awesome. when you uh, when you begin channeling, and you said no one really taught you. Did you like? How did you know the first time you channeled? Like, was there someone there with you who heard you, or? What? No. What What happened is, hang on. Let me grab something. Oh. Oh. Hang on, let me see this. Like this is a book, and this oh, okay. is you know, you know one of those regular things. This was my first channeling that I was just writing, and there was like just so I got this whole download from the entire collective oh. of Pleiadians to tell me everything. Thing there is, and then I got humanity, and then I got, and then I got society, and a perspective from the celestials, human uh, things to come about humanity, Mikado, this one entity, and I just started, and then I was sharing it with some people, and shit, <laughs> you know. And then I got this one, and I don't know if you can read that. It's in a language. It's really hieroglyphics. There you go. That's better. Yeah, see I can it? see that. Okay. So I had this checked out in like a Sumerian. So now I'm done with the validation. And it goes, it's an ancient dialect of what we understand as Sumerian. And I was like, that is perfect. Awesome. Thank you. And you know, and I was done. That was all the validation I needed to start channeling in what you call 3D, right. you know. So I would get the words and I would speak them, just like I was writing them, but I start speaking. And I was doing a, first the language of uh, Parisian so I can speak it out loud and not worry about what I was saying in English, and it was trans language, uh -huh. and then I would actually speak with the language to the entity that was present and then translate and then like in my videos a few of the earlier videos were me speaking in Parisian or Ioni or Inani or whatever and then translating it and like I go, go in and out of it it's so cool and then Hugh came in and said okay we're gonna teach you to be able we call an open channel you're already conscious you're already channeling we're gonna teach you about how other entities are gonna come and say hello this is our download, and they give me the download the day before, something like that. They give me an idea of where is it going to go, so I would have the confidence. Because remember, you know, I'm still conditioning. I'm still having the fear. I'm still worried. I don't approve of it. Fearful in that respect, yeah. you know. And they gave. Give me the idea, the idea of what, uh, what the impartation was going to be about. I got the I went through it in my mind. I read it, so to speak, up here. I was like, why would you just let it flow speak like that? And it would, you know, sometimes they would put a delay in. It's like I'm speaking right now as I'm speaking, but sometimes two or three seconds or even four seconds ahead that I really caught yeah. it up into my mind, you know, like, oh, I'm catching up on the words. 
so I wouldn't condition it because something major was coming out or a synchronistic moment played out, something like that. It's like, and if there's a moment of synchronicity, like on this group, It was, it was, it was beautiful. I was like, take a channeling lesson, do I? And they go, no. Nope. Just relax, let it calm, and it's natural time. And it did. So I got, again, the automatic, and then the languages were epic, and then my messages, and now my messages are getting bigger and bigger. A whole new world that opened up to, if you want to, I can't even almost put it in. 3D, but I can maybe give a perspective. I'm, I'm sitting here at an idea of what it is. And then, here, I got a great video. I have a teddy bear that hangs out. <laughs> so, what it was is Seth, my one of my, he's not my higher self, but we're in council teaching. This is Roxy now. My there. He goes, okay, Roxy, are you ready? And he goes like this. And then he covers it up. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit. He goes, all right, there's a little more. Holy shit. So that now getting this stuff on how, how even more so on an intricate beauty of it. Right. With you. It, it's that fast to where it's whole, and it was almost at the beginning. It was a, it was such a scariness that was going to be. As a human being, Roxanne, if I understood all of it, and I would just dis business, holy shit, there is really no individuality expression. And really, okay. there's not. You know, there's a unity of all the expressions, and it never happens in time, it only happens in now. And with our time, our validation of your individuality. But truly, it's all happening fucking now. And I was like, I'm going to be lost. And I'm not even going to remember who the fuck I am. And that almost, that scared Like, no, no, no. And they, they gave me a, 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 a comfort. I and then they start giving giving me the downloads of how your individuality is truly recognized in the moment, which is forever, in your own individual expression, still all being, oh man, that just out of the mind, the 3D mind, but I got it, and they just gave me enough to start to contemplate that, and then with all that knowledge, came such a reality, my understanding of this new reality of what the illusion truly is from a higher perspective. Yeah. But man, <laughs> and it's like, oh my, it's that big, and they're going, yep, it is that, it is that gargantuan, yeah. you know, but it's not scary, it's not, it's like, I'm, I'm in it, and I'm in intrigue, and it's so urge to expand, once again, the possibilities of this little 3D particle, fractal of information, can really see even a fraction 
perception of what's truly going on beyond what I'm feeling right now. It's like, fucking thank you. I'm, I'm on. I'm yeah. on. You know? Oh, wow. I feel like we you know. Oh, baby. Um, yeah, I feel like when you said that time of validation you went through, I'm kind of in that because mm -hmm. I used to have a WordPress and I would sit and like all of a sudden I'd have these like, it just feels like, you know, I get excited all of a sudden, and I know exactly what I want to say, and I write these really long things, and like some of it's metaphysical, some of it's like, like emotional, and I'd post it, and then I just delete it all, and I eventually deleted my whole WordPress because I'm like, I don't know, like this, this doesn't really. Like makes sense to anybody. Guys, there's like a specific entity. There's some like really, really strong being who will come down and like my entire body gets covered in chill bumps. The hair stands up on my skin and like I start crying because. It's, yeah. it's like it's like holy. It's so holy that like I ah. can't handle it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You that injection of love that we actually thought we can actually perceive in an amount of yeah. love, and you and get that, and you melt. Profound. You know, I yeah. can't even. I can't. You can't put it in the. Just vibrate. And right. Trust that it, whoever. Yeah. But yeah, these are just so intense. So there's something with this. Yeah, I'm writing. What are you gonna do right now? What are you writing? Um, I'm things? working actually on a feature film. This is my third feature film I've written, and uh, it's basically about this guy. He's kind of he works at a he's a telemarketer at like a big you know firm. And he's like he's suicidal because his wife passed away, and well the screenplay is called Heart Bloom, and so you know he becomes suicidal. He kind of like gets all his prescription medicine. He goes to this field, and he sees In that, she eventually leads him to the, like this pond, and she dives down into the pond, and he dives down with her, and it goes really deep, and eventually he like pops up, and he's in this like fourth density environment. So like that's why I'm I'm trying to bridge all of the knowledge I know of like ascension into a like, screenplay format. And he, um, so. <laughs> So basically, he finds out that in his fourth density, he's like an expert on the philosophy of love, and that his kind of his dissertation is physical reality, living out a physical life. And that through like those flowers that have. Like help raise the vibration of. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you know, I'm still. I can't. There's so many things I want to say, but like. That's fucking you know, it's awesome. Slow process. Kid. I'm getting there though. I'm. I'm 56 pages in. Yeah. In their time, in their magic moment, they will be there. A group of things that I've I've co-created, and we're we're talking, and you have all of this shit hanging right there, and you're like, but you can't because it's not the now. 
the idea is to trust that that perfect timing for those words that will flow out. B, when we let ourselves speak, when we know the urge is there to speak and instead of the repetition speak so we can make a point or make myself known or whatever. Right. In other words, we're forcing ourselves or preaching in that aspect, truly. And and let it happen, and it's not magical timing. When that happens, you just see the beauty. It's like, oh, I got it. I got it. Thank you. And that's what's happening with this. Oh, yeah, trust it. Yeah, I'm definitely I'm just letting it happen unfold as it needs to unfold. Oh, yes. Unfold as you can see. That excitement. You know. I, I, I would just, wow. Yeah, that's you know? crazy, though. Wow. Synchronicity. Oh. Yeah. I don't know if I told you about the uh, the synchronistic moment of, of losing my truck. My dad gave me a truck. I started my business. You know, I was getting here. My rent's really cheap. And I was getting a little money here, a little money there. And friends were helping me. And I was learning the idea of I'm allowed to let people help me. I, I made an idea. I want to ask for help. But then, and sometimes I needed to, and I did, only to find out that the moment was already set up, and I never had to worry because I was asking. Out of right. Fear, you know. One of your. Jump the gun a little bit, and then. Poof! Here would come the magic. So the idea is I get the truck, and the truck tells me, you know, I, I know I'm fine with the truck. My dad gives it to me. And and then I get an opportunity. I took, Before I woke up, I took a payday loan out on it to get some abundance. And I was paying it back while I, I woke up, and I had a, a couple payments left. But one time I couldn't make the payment. I was like, okay. okay. And then they wouldn't let you make partial payments. So, you know, me being a Sagittarian, I have abundance in my hand. I, I can't make the $100, so I went and spent the fucking 100 I didn't have a car. I start getting to come and pick me up, take me to grocery, spend them at their house. Those moments I would have never experienced if I had a truck. Because, you know, yeah. I had access to go to the grocery store. I got a ride to this place, or maybe I was doing something else and not experienced that. And all of those moments were epic. Then the biggest moment, it's like, you know, I'm ready for. For a vehicle, and I sense I sense that the rides were starting to go away, and I was like, okay, get Wednesday. This one Wednesday, I thought of this. Jason, you know Jason. I said, oh, we're close. In my invited to the channeling on Friday. But I said, you know what? Don't worry about the session. Why don't you come to the channel and we'll meet and we'll see where we go from there? And she goes, I would love that. So Thursday she calls me. I need the directions to the place. And I said, okay. I gave her the directions. I said, hey, by the way, um, do you mind giving me a ride? Because it's, you know, you know, I'm pretty close to you. What I remember in our conversation. I, and she goes, yeah, I'm like, I think I'm like, you're like three miles away. Perfect. She comes over, picks me up, takes me, goes to one of the filmings on the channel. 
lunch. She brings me home. Katrina comes over. And then and she calls me and she goes, hey, Roxy, me and my husband were talking, and we have a Hummer, a little H3 Hummer. Oh, wow. And I said, uh, uh, and I actually say, you know, I have a, a friend that was thinking about giving me a, you know, that's great. Let me let me on with this, and I'll let you know. And I hung up the phone, and I'm kidding me. A home run with you, Roxanne. <laughs> it's the gifts of the universe. I called her right back, and I said, "Look, a big gift, and I, it was hard for me to accept it. So I would love to accept it." And she goes, "Well, we're home right now. You want to come over and get a get it, or you or you up?" And I was like, "No, you know, my friend Katrina's here. She can take take me over." Today, I think it's been two two and a half months now. Two months. Let's see, what is it? It was in March, May, April, May, June. Yeah. It was sometime in April that I got it. And I, I've been driving it since. So I got it. That is not, I, not only did I, you know, and it's like, I was like, okay, okay, do they want it back? When do they want it back? And I was like, well, stop it! And that's what I was learning. It's like when they want it back, they can have it back. I don't know when it's going to be. I don't care when it's going to be. But in that now, that'll be fine because something else. I, I trust it. I got that and I trust it. So now it's like, it's like I'm on the front of this roller coaster ride and I'm just Just sitting here feeling it as I'm, yeah, I, I don't have to do anything. It's an epic. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the biggest thing I can and, and say to anyone out there is trust your truth, yourself, and whatever challenge that you are excited about, yet fear is in the way, that is the biggest moment of magic. Right. Follow that excitement. I don't care if you wake yourself up at 3 in the morning and says you need to drive down to the beach yellow coat to come up. I, I don't give a shit if that's to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and the beach is five hours away and you have to take a gas and no freaking money. See all the moments of magic. It really, really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Everything is just so awesome right now. <laughs> it is. Says that. Yeah. Very much so. Anywho. All right. Nine twenty for me. I'm gonna do my I got a nice little meditation. I like the nights. I'm feeling a good med coming on. And okay. then I'm gonna go off to La La Land. And what's the last thing? Oh, yeah, most colonies. 
Yeah, we got <laughs> we got some we got some games to play up there tonight. <laughs> All right, guys. I love you guys. You here? All right. Yeah. Take care. See ya. Bye. Bye, bye, baby. Yeah.